Hello and thank you for tuning into Sideline Story, your destination for sports news analysis and discussions. I am your host, Brandon Yates, and I'm joined by my two fantastic co-hosts, Yang Wang and Tian Yu. And today we will be talking about sports news events of 2023 in China. I think it's been a really phenomenal year um, for a variety of Chinese athletes, Chinese teams. It's been a pretty memorable, momentous year, I would say. And China Media Group has produced a list of their top 10 stories that happened in China from the past year. And uh, CGTN's Mike Fox will give us that list now. The 19th Asian Games and the 31st edition of the World University Games were successfully held in Hangzhou and Chengdu, respectively. The Chinese women's basketball team lifted their first Women's Basketball Asia Cup since 2011 after beating Japan in the final. The Chinese badminton team topped the podium at this year's BWF Sudaman Cup for the 13th time after easing past South Korea 3-0. China left a huge mark on the World Aquatics Championships in Fukuoka, sweeping the gold medal tally with 20 victories across diving, swimming and artistic swimming events. Ding Loren made chess history as China's first male world champion after a thrilling tie-break victory at the International Chess Federation World Championship. Triple breaststroke world champion Chin Haiyang was awarded the best male swimmer of the year in Budapest. Zhang Jielei earned the most important victory of his career with a stunning six-round technical knockout victory over the undefeated hometown hero Joe Joyce in London as he was crowned WBO interim world heavyweight champion. Esports became an official medal event for the first time in the history of the Asian Games. CMG released the Asian Games Esports Events production standards. Chinese players won a total of four golds and one bronze. Chinese tennis players, including Zhang Shijian and Zheng Tianwen, achieved remarkable breakthroughs in 2023. And CMG signed a memorandum of understanding with the International Olympic Committee and the Paris Olympic Organizing Committee to provide top-level broadcasting services and coverage for Olympic events to viewers around the world. Okay, um, Yang Guang, like I said, um, I think over the past year, from my side, I was expecting to cover a lot more international sports stories and, I mean, you know, I thought that would be dominating the headlines. And I suppose there were elements of international sports news that were very memorable over the last year. But And we'll get into that probably next week. But I was very surprised how much Chinese sport we covered in the sense that a lot of it was very popular domestically in China. But a lot of teams and athletes became, I would say, worldwide sensations um, over the past year. But just sticking with China and, you know... Um, various teams and athletes were there any standouts for you um over the course of 2023 well um there are so many in 2023 yeah and it's a big year because it's the year when sports return to everybody's life in china as well as the big international sporting events after the pandemic um, china successfully hosted the university games and the asian games um, they were the opportunities for the world to know that china is now not only ready to host the international games, but uh, host them like the Olympics. Yeah. Um, Brandon and I were in Hangzhou, and uh, Tian Yu went to Chengdu yeah. um, for the university arts. They felt like an Olympic stand events. Yeah. The stadiums, accommodation, transportation, the level of competitiveness, and the food. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Definitely the food. <laughs> yeah, 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 in both events. Yeah, um, yeah. They are phenomenal. But my choice of the top sports news stories in 2023 for Chinese athletes would still be the Chinese badminton team winning the Sudiemen Cup on home okay. soil. Um, there are so many classic moments generated at that tournament. Um, it looked like something Chinese fans should take for granted, you know, winning, yeah. in, winning that trophy. Right. China is the absolute badminton number one force in the world. China won the, that cup countless times. 
and it seems nobody now remembers when was the last time the trophy was won by another country. Mm. I mean, but with that, with that being said, I think another good thing about for the sport of badminton is that it does seem to be growing internationally as well. I mean, China still, I think, dominates the majority mm. of the categories and, you know, they win the most titles, etc. But I think it's also great that uh, the world number one, for example, in the men's singles is Victor Axelsson from yeah, Denmark. Yeah. So I've always had a love for badminton um, and coming to China and being able to see that passion for the sport and just the level that it's played at. I mean, when we watched some of those badminton games in, in Hangzhou at the, at the Asian Games, it really was phenomenal. Not just, you know, the performances from the athletes, but the support as well. There was a real electricity in the venue. Um, so I think that uh, it's great to see that China is still dominating the sport, but that it also does seem to be growing internationally at quite a rapid rate. Yeah, um, but uh, this time um, at the Sudiaman Cup, China was truly pushed to the edge of a cliff. In the semi-final, China was 2-1 down against Japan and the men's doubles pair Liu Yuchen and Ou Xuanyi faced four straight match points mm. of Japan in their third game decider. Any mistake would see China um, eliminated. Yeah. When I was watching that match, I felt like my heart, my heartbeat <laughs> stopped. Imagine how they felt. Yeah, Jeez. I could barely breathe. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, kind of feeling when you when your team was on the brink of loss, you just can't imagine the pressure on the players um, yeah. on the courts. I remember the whole crowd was in dead silence mm. when China faced those match points and Japanese players were all prepared to run to the court to celebrate. <laughs> but point by point, the Chinese pair crawled back, winning yeah. six consecutive points to help China level the score before the women's double is completed comeback. And just on the side of the mental things that you were mentioning there, I think badminton's also one of those sports where tiny margins really determine yeah. who's going to succeed exactly. or not. So that like in rugby, there are moments like that, but there's a, there's a bit more room for error, even if you are chasing like a one point um, deficit or something like that. Whereas in badminton, like just, you know, the slightest move or, you know, the slightest miscalculation with a shot or something like that, or hitting the net, it's very intricate in a sense. Um, I think more so than a lot of sports. So like the pressure that must've been on, you know, some of those Chinese athletes in that moment, I can't even begin to fathom what that must have felt like. Yeah, there are so many dramatic uh, moments in <laughs> yeah. badminton. Um, I think badminton is a sport. The momentum is so important yeah. for, the, for the teams, for the players on courts. And to watch such a match um, of Team China just makes you pumped. Um, yeah. And I guess that's why we love sports. The dramas, the unexpected and the miraculous moments. China went on to win the final, of course, against the South Korea, and the women's singles Chen Yufei well explained the excitement of the team after winning her match against world number one and Seyon. I think we all did a good job. I did not perform well in yesterday's semifinals, but my teammates fought back to reach the final. I was inspired a lot, and I thank them for giving me another chance to prove myself. Um, I think Chen's words also mirrored the charm of the mixed team event when everyone fights for his or her teammates looking after each other. Uh, to me, that title run of Team China with, uh, with so many ups and downs is the top sports story of the year for me. Tianyu, that's pretty, uh, that was a great start from Yang Guang there. I don't think it gets much more dramatic than that. But from your side of things, were there any standout moments or teams or athletes or anything that jumps to mind when you look back at 2023? Uh, for me, I gotta say the holding of the Hangzhou Asian Games and the Chengdu University Games is definitely the largest sports news this year. Right. You know, both tournaments are pretty large-scale sports events that have gathered players from around the world. And since we've all been there to actually report on, on these tournaments in person, I think we can all agree that they were both held very successfully in terms of how uh, professional the matches were, the ambience mm. and the services of the stadiums and uh, all these activities uh, inside the players' village to let the players know uh, know more about the Chinese culture. Also, mm. I get to watch esports as be <laughs> as a medal <laughs> event course. at the tournament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the goat know... was there. Faker, Faker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he had know... a huge fan base. Yeah, yeah. He was yeah. like the Justin Bieber of the Asian Games. It was crazy. He had, <laughs> yeah. he had a, a lot of fanfare around him. Yeah, just like any other sport, to really excel at esport takes a lot of sweat and talent. And now let's listen to what a professional esports player has to say about how he chose to enter this industry and what it takes 
to become a professional esports player. Here's an interview between CGTN and League of Legends professional player Icon.、Uh, when I was a student, I participated in some esports competitions with my classmates, and I guess I showed some talents. So I was chosen by a semi-professional team, and this began my esports career. I think what most attracted me is how this career taught me to fight as a team and、uh, practice persistently, and of course the satisfaction when I win the game. So I would say esports filled my life with dreams and objectives.、Uh, usually we train for twelve hours per day. Team training in the afternoon and personal training after midnight. And I choose to become a pro player because I love this game. So I will definitely still want to play this game after training. Talent definitely is the most important feature of a pro player. Rank points is not everything. Talent here. I mean,、uh, as an esports player, he needs to manage his mood well. Like you have to adjust yourself after failure, and you can't be arrogant when you success. And most importantly, you need to adjust yourself, blending with your team.、Uh, you have to play as a team, not as an individual. And yeah, and another thing in terms of highlighting individuals in 2023, I think、uh, Zhang Zhilei has done an amazing job by knocking out British star boxer Joey Joyce. Uh, right. And claiming the title of WBO interim yeah, yeah, yeah. heavyweight champion. Many people think that Chinese boxing is the best boxing in the world. People always think Chinese boxing can produce heavyweight boxers, and Chinese boxing can compete with European and American boxing. I don't agree. I believe we need to be confident and keep training hard in a down-to-earth manner. And Chinese boxing will definitely occupy the most prominent position on the international stage.、Uh, I think he's going to be a, a contender for a couple of other belts as well. I think he's,、yeah. I think he's targeted Tyson Fury. Tyson yeah, Fury. Tyson Fury. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think if that if that could happen、um, at some point in the future, hopefully Tyson Fury is still holding all of the belts. But I mean,、mm-hmm. that would be incredible. That was really an amazing result, considering the fact that Zhang is already forty years old. Yeah, and, but he's、uh, a big dude, right?、So、I've seen、yeah. pictures of him. He's yeah, massive. Yeah, massive. massive. Yeah. yeah. And no one really expects him to expected him to win, as his opponent Joyce was has been had been winning fifteen games on a row,、mm. and fourteen of his wins were chaos. And yet, John, again, the drama, yeah, right? Unexpected yeah, results. Yeah. That's what we love about sport. Yeah, any, any upsets. Any, anything can happen. Anybody can win on any given day. Anything can happen. Yeah. And that knockout was so classic. Yeah. Really. <laughs> A huge punch to Joyce and.、Uh, yeah. John just turn around and smile at the camera. <laughs> a beautiful. I、kill. love those kind of moments when, like,、yeah. um, the boxer knows that they've won before, like the 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 fighters. You know what I mean? When they la- when they land a punch, when they just know that、yeah. there's no ways this guy's getting up,、yeah. and they and they、out. celebrate before the match is over. I love moments、yeah. like that. Yeah. I mentioned Faker earlier, and we're going to talk about、um, influential Chinese sports figures. So, from your side, Yang Guang, who would you say has been or currently is the most influential Chinese individual athlete? Oh、uh, well, for the scope of、um, active athletes,、mm. um, I think there's a quite easy way to answer this question. Just check the flag bearer of the Chinese delegation of the Asian Games opening ceremony, the new breaststroke king,、yes. Qin Haiyang.、Mm-hmm. Um, he's probably the most dominant Chinese athlete in a single discipline. Of sports other than in table tennis, I mean three gold medals in as many singles races he attended at World Championships, fifty meter, one hundred meter, and two hundred meter breaststroke races, plus the two hundred meter world record. Um, he is the first male swimmer to win all the three distances in breaststroke、mm. in history, uh, which helped him win the Swimming Male Athlete of the Year award by World Aquatics. Listen to what he said after his first gold medal at the World Championships. I lost the multiple times, so I didn't want to lose this time. I was determined to win the title tonight. This gold is only a start, and I believe more young Chinese swimmers will get better results in the future. As for me, I will work harder towards the goal of breaking the world record. I hope I can maintain my momentum and do better at the Paris Olympics next year. I think now Qin Haiyang's target is beyond just the、uh, breaststroke gold medals in Paris, but more world records across different distances. 
I still think, you know, while world records are still incredibly um, monumentous, I think to really make a name for yourself and to be remembered globally and for many years, I think gold medals at the Olympics, for some reason, if you break a record and win a gold medal at the Olympics, that's, you know, that's the pinnacle. But I think that to to be recognized as a, a global world famous athletes i think you have to nail some gold medals you need to do more no like, no you yeah. have to you have to get gold medals at the olympics you yeah, have to dominate yeah, the olympics yeah. like you can get all of these world records at the fina world championships or whatever which is great but people people that aren't swimming fans i don't think are that aware of those records yeah. but people that are just you know sports fans they all watch the Olympics. So I think if he dominates the Olympics, I think that's going to propel yeah. his influence yeah. to another level. Like what um, Michael Phelps did in 2008. Yeah, exactly, in exactly. So that's the thing. I think While I think that his achievements are phenomenal, and I'm sure his influence in China is still great, I don't know if his global influence yet is that great. I think 2024 is going to be a huge year, year yeah, for him yeah, yeah. and for a variety of Chinese athletes because I think there are so many that are at the top of their game right now. Yeah. Um, I think there is a huge chance for a variety of athletes at Paris in 2024 to become globally famous. To make their names heard out loud in and the I national think, stage. Yeah, yeah, and I think that can change their lives, not just in terms of, you know, popularity and fame because you probably find that once you become famous, look, I mean, I'm sure they do incredibly well domestically. But if they start, you know, representing international brands and start being recognized globally, I think that their lives can change forever. And they can also, they have the opportunity to put a global spotlight onto Chinese sports and athletes. And I think that is really special too. Because yes, you want to be dominant in your own country and you want to be famous in your own country. I think you also want the world to recognize your success. I think everybody wants to be, I think every country wants to be recognized globally. So I think 2024 is going to be a monumental year for Chinese sport because if they can dominate the Olympics and get the eyes of the world onto Chinese sports, I think that's going to be massive for various teams and athletes. And I think Chin Haiyang is going to be one of those guys that's leading that uh, that push yeah. exactly. to be recognized yeah, globally. Are there any other names that you can think of, Tian Yu, that are currently influential globally, wow. um, yeah. but also could potentially use Paris 2024 as a platform to become world famous yeah i think currently it should be uh the, the most inf influential chinese sports figure that uh comes to my mind should be the chinese table tennis legend ma long mm -hmm. you know in, in in the just concluded ittf mixed team world cup in chengdu he just claimed another man singles world champion title at 35 years old and it's fair to say that he really has a trophy laden career just take a look at the record he set he he's the first and only male player to complete a career double Grand Slam. And he held a ranking of number one for a total of, of over 60 months, the most by any male players in the history of table tennis. This is my thing, though. Like, <laughs> that's fantastic and great, amazing achievements. But I still think, like Yao Ming, okay? I know he's mm. not playing anymore. On paper, not as much success as these athletes that we've mentioned, but... Yao Ming, probably the most famous Chinese athlete globally of all yeah. time. So do you think that success in China is still not necessarily getting these athletes global fame? And do you think they even care about global fame? I think you need to play in the sport that is globally popular. That's a very good point. Yeah, yeah. basketball is not only a US sport. Yeah, and uh, golf and... But then again, like swimming, I mean, swimming is a globally known sport, but I guess it's not really something that your ordinary sports fan watches annually. You know, I find that your ordinary sports fan only watches swimming at the Olympics. Um, so maybe the Olympics is a chance for some of the specialist sports athletes from China. If they really dominate at that sport, at that event, maybe then they could become globally famous. And I think Chin Haiyang is going to, he probably has the best, I suppose there's some tennis players as well. Um, Zhong Chin Wen. Chin Wen. I think she has potentially the chance to become globally famous. Um, and But that, again, that's a sport that is world-renowned and that people watch, you know, annually. And, you know, the Grand Slam tennis tournaments are very famous, etc. Chin Haiyang, I think if he breaks records and wins gold medals at Paris in 2024, I think he has the chance to become globally famous. But Yang Guang, uh, we've touched on a couple of sports. Um, and I suppose at the Asian Games and a couple of other events, we saw certain sports grow. Any sports that stick out in your mind? I would say the biggest breakthrough must come from tennis. Yes. Um, I think Zheng Qingwen winning the WTA 
Most Improved Player of the Year award just reflects the improvement of Chinese tennis this whole year. That's an incredible achievement. Yeah, yeah. honestly, because there are so many up and coming tennis、mm. players right now on the women's side.、Mm. Um, so that's a she should be very proud of that. Yeah, Zhang winning the two WTA titles and Zhang Zhijian breaking to the top ten in the ATP rankings. Wu Yibing become the first male player from the Chinese mainland to win an ATP event trophy.、Uh, China now has five women's players ranked inside top 100 in the world.、Uh, what a fruitful year for Chinese yeah. tennis! Zhang、yeah. Qingwen, of course, now spearheads the Chinese this Chinese contingent after some inconsistent performances in the beginning of the season. Zhang picked up her form in the latter half of the year. Her title triumph at the Changzhou Open, which also marked her first WTA 500 title, was absolutely the highlighting moment for her this year. Well, when I was on the court, finished the last point, I was feeling super happy, and all the crowd they support me a full. In that moment, the feeling was unexplainable, and you know, because I feel I got win here, you know. In Zhengzhou, we are in China. Finally, have a chance to play in my country. I got good preparation. My body is ready. Everything is there. And right now, I'm just feeling super happy. Wants to enjoy the time with my team.、Um, I wonder if she sees her title wins on the WTA circuit. I wonder if she sees those victories as more influential or important to her as opposed to her run in the U.S. Open, because I think her run in the U.S. Open put her on the map globally as well. So、yeah. I wonder which she values more. Anyway, but、uh, you know, I think of course titles are titles, and、uh, you know that's amazing. But I also think that we need to recognize how well she did for such a young athlete at the U.S. Open, and we have to hope that、um, she can continue that form in 2024 at the Olympics and also at the various、uh, Grand Slam tournaments. Yeah,、um, remember Zhang is just、uh, 21 years old.、Yeah. Right? Everyone is expecting her to be the next Lina,、yeah. um, but I think she might achieve something even bigger. I think so too. Yeah, I think she's got a a great.、Potential. Yeah, I think she's got unbelievable potential to go beyond Lina.、Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully, she remains injury free and continues her progress、um, and becomes a little bit more consistent, which comes with、yeah. age and experience.、Uh, but I think she, I agree, Yang Guang. She's definitely leading the tennis charge、um, from from China's side, and I think that she's going to be the the poster girl. Um, for future Chinese success in that sport,、um, it's a lot of pressure to put on a 21-year-old's shoulders.、Yeah. But、um, from some of the performances we've seen from her in the last year,、um, and we also had the the privilege of watching her win at the Asian, Asian Games, Games.、Um, on home soil, which I think was also just a massive pressure moment for her.、Um, I think that that she has the the talent and the mental fortitude to、um, to really excel. Tianyu, from your side, any sports that excelled? Yeah, I agree with Yang Wang. Yeah, tennis、mm. being tennis players,、uh, the the tennis players that he just mentioned are doing a really a good job this year. And also, I think、uh, the female basketball players have been、yes. doing a great job.、Mm. Good by point. Winning the FIBA Asian Cup champion, their opponent team Japan been dominating this tournament for ten years, winning five titles consecutively. And many of the major players in the Chinese team were unable to appear in the final due to injuries. But the team still won the game after a fierce battle. So, so I think they deserve a lot of praise from us for、uh, for their resilience. For sure, Yang Guang. Are there any performers that stand out in your mind that you think are going to really excel in twenty twenty four? Yeah, of course, the Paris Olympics is the most anticipated sporting event in two thousand twenty four. And what I'm looking forward to is something China almost did at the Tokyo Olympics two years ago. Topping the medal tally. Yes,、yeah. I know some say winning medals is no longer the only focus when we watch the Olympics. And, lies,、uh, lies. <laughs> <laughs> medals are always the focus. <laughs> and、uh, competing in Europe means the competition would be tougher for Chinese athletes、yes. than、yeah. them competing in Japan,、uh, a country geographically quite close to China. But、mm. I would say it's a realistic target. Yeah, and、uh, a historic achievement if China truly makes it. Absolutely, and I think that there's a lot of individuals and teams that I think that we've seen over the last year that I think can dominate, not just on the Asian continent but globally.、Um, so I think there's going to be a lot of success for China going into into the Olympics in 2024. Tianyu, from your side, any expectations? Yeah,、uh, for Paris Olympics, I think I would like to see、uh, Chinese if Chinese swimmers like Qin Haiyang and、yeah. Zhang Yufei. 
could yes. make some new achievements. That's someone we haven't mentioned yet. She's yeah. also been brilliant. Yeah. But yeah, with that being said, I think most of our focus will be on the Olympics, uh, of course, naturally, going into 2024. And I think, I, I joked, but Yang Guang makes a good point that it isn't necessarily only about medals. There's also a lot of human interest stories that we that become iconic. So we'll have to wait and see what those moments could be. And yeah, of course, 2024 should be an epic year for sport in general. And we'll be covering all sports as we always do here on Sideline Story. But that is all we have time for on this week's episode of the show. Thank you so much for joining us. And of course, we will be back next week with our latest topic. And we'll see you then. Mm-hmm.